got it. I'm going to pull my screen up. And we're going to take some notes. Um, I want to make this as easy as possible. So I'm going to do the heavy lifting. You guys can obviously take notes as we go. But uh, it's important that we're on the same page with respect to a few definitions. So I'll, I'll try to take this from A to Z. If you don't know anything about uh, portfolio management or Delta or beta weighting, uh, don't worry about it. All right, we'll bring you, we'll oh, bring you up to speed. After you finish your notes, can you email it to me so I can send it to our pro members? I can, yep, awesome. yep. Thank I'll you. make sure I save this and uh, get it out to, to everybody. Um, Adam, I, I moved uh, I moved houses a few months back and haven't set up my green screen. So you're going to have to deal with my boring um, my boring background. Cody gives me crap every time I show my video about my uh, law walls in the background. So uh, they look like circuit breaker boxes. Is what they look like in the camera. It just doors. Like they are doors. <laughs> they're doors. Oh, Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll digress. All right, so, so definitions. What you're gonna take away from this, this discussion is you will know how to measure how much exposure you have in your portfolio, how to model it in Thinkorswim so you can see visually what your whole portfolio looks like. You can then do what if scenarios and you can say, hey, if the market goes up or down a certain amount, how much money am I gonna make in my portfolio? And I'll give you a little template at the end that helps you to determine what your portfolio should look like depending on what your bias is. So if you're aggressively bullish or mildly bullish or moderately bearish, I'll give you a little, a little shortcut uh, metric kind of system to use so that you can, so you can say, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of bearish on the market. What should my portfolio look like? Or I'm really bullish, you know, how much Delta is appropriate for my portfolio. So this is going to be very practical. Okay. Very hands-on. Uh, and I think, I think you'll enjoy it. All right. So, First things first, a couple of definitions, all right? Most of you know this, some of you don't. Wanna make sure we're on the same page though. So Delta is the Greek that measures how much money we make if the stock rises a dollar, okay? How much money we make if the stock rises a dollar. So if your Delta is positive, you're bullish, all right? If your Delta is negative, you're bearish. And the amount of Delta reflects how much exposure you have. So if I have a trade that has a positive 50 Delta and you have a trade that has a positive 200 Delta and it's the same stock, let's say we're talking about Apple. Okay, so I have 50 Apple Deltas because I'm bullish. And this could be a stock trade. This could be an option trade. It doesn't matter. The nice thing about Delta is you can use it across all instruments. Okay. This isn't just unique to options. This is also applicable to stock trading as well. Maybe you have 200 Apple Deltas. Okay. So you have four times the exposure. You have four times the exposure as me. If you have 200 Delta and I have 50 Delta. Okay. So the bigger the Delta number, the more exposure you have. Now, real quick, I'll just expand on this. The three things you can do to get bullish, to get positive Delta, you can buy stock. Okay, we also call that long stock. You can buy a call option or you can sell a put option. Those are the three basic vehicles you have for getting bullish. And then for bearish, you can short stock. Okay, uh, you can sell a call option or you can buy a put or you can buy a put. <clears throat> if the numbers are, are blurry on your YouTube, you guys should be able to increase the resolution on the settings on the bottom right of the video. So Gaylord, you should be able to, to clear that up if you go to your settings feature, okay? Try to zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit bigger here. Um, okay, so when it comes to measuring um, the delta of an individual position, let's, let's go to think or swim for a second. Let's go to think or swim here. Where's my mouse? There it is. Um, all right. I'm going to go to the monitor tab. And uh, got a bunch of different positions here. Bunch of different positions in my account. And I'm going to go to the delta column. If you don't already have delta as a column heading, you can add it by going to the uh, cogwheel over here on the right-hand side. 
you can find delta in the available columns and you can add it over there as one of the current uh, columns. I always have delta on every portfolio I look at. Okay, this would be a staple for me. So let's, let's take a look at uh, this first position, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. You'll see my delta right here is six. I want a little bit of interaction here. If AMD goes up a dollar, how much money am I gonna make? If I have a delta of positive six, forget the decimal, 0.4, doesn't matter. I have a delta of six, of six AMD deltas. How much exposure do I have? How much money am I gonna make if AMD goes up a dollar? That's the question. There's a little delay here, so it's gonna be challenging with, with the Q&A, but as soon as you know the answer, just throw it in there. Dennis, six bucks. Yeah, or $6.41. So do I have a lot of exposure in AMD right now? Would you say this is a big position in my portfolio? Like, am I going to be concerned if AMD goes down over the next couple of days? Say, oh, I got a lot of exposure here. No, it's, it's, I'm not concerned. It's not a big position. It's very small. Uh, how did I get six deltas? Maybe I bought six shares of stock. Maybe I bought six shares of stock. Okay. Maybe I bought a way out of the money call option, a six delta call. Maybe I sold a six delta put. Maybe I did a spread that has a combination of six deltas. There's a variety of ways I can get this exposure, but, but here's the takeaway. Even if you don't know what the position is, because I haven't opened it up yet. You don't know what I have on AMD. I don't even remember what I have on AMD. But just knowing that the delta 6.4 tells me A, I'm bullish, and B, it's not that big of a position. It's pretty small. Okay, pretty small position. Okay, it is easy to manage one position in isolation. Okay, you go find a trade, you put it on. You go find another trade, you put it on. You go find another trade, you put it on. Maybe you're risking a small amount in each trade. You know, I'm risking 100 bucks in AMD. I'm risking 100 bucks in Apple. I'm risking 100 bucks in Microsoft. Where it starts to get tricky is as you start to um, collect inventory. You know, you've got all these positions and now you've got a big pile of positions. How do you know that you don't have too many positions on at the same time? How do you know what the aggregate exposure is? Those are the types of answers that there are questions that we're going to answer with the discussion today. Okay. But I just want to go through the rest of these. Let me ask you, do you see any negative Delta positions in this portfolio? Do you see any negative numbers in the Delta column? I don't see any. They all look positive to me. So do I have any bearish trades? Do I have any bearish positions in this portfolio? No, not a one, not a one, okay? So if I told you, man, I'm really bearish on the market, I think we're screwed. I think we're gonna crash. You'd look at my portfolio and you, you, you'd say, well, that doesn't make sense. Your portfolio does not match your bias. You think the market's gonna crash. Why do you own all of these bullish trades? I'd say, oh, whoops. I mean, maybe I should change something about this portfolio. You know, so the first thing is you can kind of get a general idea of does your portfolio match your overall bias? This portfolio is pretty bullish. Okay. Now I have some active trades in here and I have some passive trades. Okay. All these guys down here are ETFs. This is like a passive uh, portfolio. I own some REITs, I own some bonds, some large caps, some small caps, some emerging markets. Um, I'll get to that here in just a second. But even though these are stock trades, they still have Delta. 100 shares of stock, 100 Delta. 100 shares of stock, 100 Delta. Okay, next. Do you see how there's a subtotal down at the bottom? 1,311 Deltas. It added up every Delta number and it told me what the cumulative total was for the whole portfolio, okay? So 1,300 deltas, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, 1,300, I mean, does that mean if the stock goes up a dollar, you make 1,300 bucks, or if the stock goes down a dollar, you lose 1,300 bucks? Yeah, kind of, but here's the thing, it's actually very misleading. I, I wish that they didn't even show this number because what they're doing is they're adding up the delta of AMD to the delta of Lulu, to the delta of the S&P, to the delta of Netflix. Let me, let me ask you this, is, is a $1 move, if this is the definition, okay, how much we make if the stock 
and we say the stock, the, the underlying stock, whatever the stock is that we have that we're trading. If it's a Microsoft option, we're talking about Microsoft stock. If it's an Apple option, then we're talking about Apple stock. Well, which, which stock is it using when it says you have 1,300 deltas? And more importantly, can you even add up the delta? I mean, think about it. Okay, so let's say you have a $1 move in AMD and a $1 move in Netflix. Are those the same thing? Like, is this apples to apples? It's not for two reasons, okay? Number one, they're different prices. AMD is what? 70 bucks, 60 bucks, somewhere around there. I don't remember, 65, let's say. Uh, Netflix is what, 400, something like that. Okay, close enough. Is a $1 move on a $65 stock the same as a $1 move on a $400 stock? No, a $1 move in Netflix is nothing. In AMD, it's a decent sized move. Okay, so number one, $1 is not the same across the board, okay? Number two, even if they were the same price, even if they were the same price, do they have the same volatility? Like let's say you have Pepsi or Coca-Cola at $100 and you're comparing it to Tesla at $100. You could say, well, they're the same price, so $1 represents a 1% move, that's apples to apples. But Tesla moves 10 times the amount of Pepsi so or Coca-Cola. So, so it's not apples to apples. Okay. So when you think about adding up the deltas, you can't add up one stock delta to another stock delta without doing something to state them in like terms. Okay. So this is basically adding up apples and oranges and bananas and grapes and strawberries and trying to figure out how many kiwis you have. It's nonsense. That 1300 doesn't mean anything. Okay. It doesn't mean anything. It's very misleading. So what I would do and what the software does, let me add one more here. Let's say $1. Um, let me go back up. Okay. So answer here was no. So we have to equalize the Delta, which means you have to adjust for the different strike prices and I meant stock prices, adjust for the different stock prices. Okay, so we gotta make AMD and Netflix equivalent somehow because one is 60 bucks, the other is 400 or 300, okay? And you have to adjust for the different volatilities. Okay, in, in uh, the stock market, another word for volatility is beta. Okay, another word for volatility is beta. So a little sidebar here, the beta of the S&P 500 is one, okay? So if you look at a stock like uh, Tesla, you know, if it's moving more than the S&P, it might have a beta of two. That means it moves two times, two times the market. So if the market's up 1%, you would expect Tesla to be up 2% because it has a beta of two. If you had another stock like Coca-Cola that has a beta of 0.5, You'd say, okay, if the S&P goes up 2%, I would expect Coca-Cola to be up 1% because it moves half as much as the overall market, okay? So, so that's what beta is by definition. What we're going to do when we, when we modify these deltas is we're going to do something called beta weighting, okay? We're gonna weight the deltas of each position by using volatility, okay, as well as stock price. So essentially what you can do is you can say, okay, I've got six AMD deltas and I've got a hundred spider deltas and I've got 25 IWM deltas and I have negative 47 Coca-Cola deltas. Now, how much overall exposure do I have? How much overall exposure do I have? Well, again, I can't add these up. Apples, oranges, bananas, they're not stated in like terms, okay? So what I can do is I can pick a common denominator, okay? Remember in math class when you would, you would learn how to add fractions? You'd have to find a common denominator so you could add the fractions together because as stated, you couldn't do it, right? You got to state them in like terms. So what we can do is we're going to pick the S&P as the common denominator. 
and we can say what does six AMD deltas translate into, you know, in terms of S and P deltas. So if the S and P rises a dollar, how much would my AMD trade make? So the computer can look at how AMD is related to the S&P and it can say, well, if the S&P goes up a dollar, that would equate to you making $3 in AMD, okay? And so let's say six AMD deltas is the equivalent of three S&P deltas. And 100 S&P deltas, obviously that would stay 100 S&P deltas. 25 IWM deltas, let's say that's the equivalent of, oh, 30 S&P deltas and negative 47 Coca-Cola deltas would be the equivalent of negative 20 S&P deltas. Okay, so now I've, I've, I've modified the numbers and stated them in like terms. Now, can I add them up? Can I add three and 130 and negative 20? Sure. So what I can do is I can figure out my uh, beta weighted spider deltas. Okay, so you're 133 minus 20, what is that, 113? So about 113 spider deltas, unless my math is off, I think that's right, okay. So 113 spider deltas. So here's what that means. My entire portfolio, okay, all of this is the equivalent of 113 spider deltas, okay. So you can basically say uh, my entire portfolio is, uh, will behave the same as 113 shares of S&P deltas. So I can say if the S&P goes up a dollar tomorrow, even though I have this big basket of positions, I'll make about 113 bucks. If the S&P goes down a dollar tomorrow, even though I have all these different positions, I'll lose about 113 bucks. Okay, do you see how powerful a concept that is? How helpful that would be? Even if you had 3000 different positions, if you wanted to distill your entire portfolio down to one number that represents your risk, you could. So this 1300 again is misleading. To beta weight, there's a button up here. You click this little box and then you just pick, you just pick which ticker symbol you want to use as the underline. And we usually use the S&P 500 because the relationship of a stock to the S&P is pretty consistent. Like I wouldn't want to use Tesla as my underline because on any given day, Tesla could do something crazy. Okay. I, I want to base um, how my portfolio is going to respond to something very um, predictable and consistent. And so most people are going to beta weight to the S and P uh, because that's something where we can say, okay, we can look at, the entire history of how Netflix is traded relative to the S and P and come up with a pretty consistent uh, correlation or relationship at, to use for this, this number. Okay. So I'm going to use the S and P ETF. You go to the Delta column now and look what it says at the bottom 352. Okay. It's not 1300 anymore. It's 352. 1300 is nonsense. Doesn't mean anything. 352 is um, not nonsense, whatever the opposite of nonsense is. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's clear, okay? It's, it's, it's an actual uh, number you can use. So right here, see it says weighted, that's what WTD stands for, weighted S&P deltas. This is your portfolio, beta weighted S&P deltas, 352. So now I know my portfolio, beta weighted delta, and if you wanted to be really lengthy in the comment, you'd say my portfolio beta weighted spider delta is 352. That is my risk number for this portfolio. That is my risk number for, for the portfolio, okay? Now, there's a couple of different things I can do with that. The first thing, the first thing, and I will take questions. Um, let me finish a couple of things first and then I'll circle back, all right, Nicholas? So. Let me circle back to that here in a second. Um, so number one, it's helpful because right now you may, 
you may say, I'm not sure what 352 spider deltas means. Like, like, I don't know if that's too much or not enough, but don't you think if you looked at this number every day, you just maybe jotted it down on a piece of paper. Hey, today my portfolio is 352 delta. And the next day it's 200. The next day it's, you know, whatever. If you paid attention to this risk number and what that translated into in terms of profit and loss, See, because there's a direct link between what your delta is and how much your, your P&L is fluctuating. Would you agree? So if you, if you say, man, you know, this portfolio was up 1200 bucks, 1260 today. Are you comfortable with that? Like, are you okay with your portfolio fluctuating 1200 bucks uh, up or down in a day? If you say, man, I'm not, I'm not, com you know, that, that's a lot. I'd be okay making that much in one day, but not losing that much. Well, what delta did you have to, to generate a $1,200 swing in the portfolio? If you say, man, I, I'd only want to see my account go up or down 300 bucks on a given day, a typical day. Well, what does that tell you? It tells you 350 deltas is too big relative to what you're comfortable with, right? Relative to what you're comfortable with. So here's, here's I think, uh, an interesting way Here's an interesting way of figuring out, of figuring out like what is an okay delta for my portfolio. Okay, so what is an okay S and P delta for my portfolio? And we like steps, right? So here's three easy steps to figure this out. Number one, what is your willing? Let's see. I don't. I don't know if I'm putting this in the right order, but willing account daily fluctuation, and you can put it in dollar terms if you want. Okay. Let's say you say, all right, on a typical day, I don't want my portfolio to fluctuate more than, well, ten percent. Would you be okay if your portfolio was up ten percent one day, down ten percent the next day, up ten percent the next day? I wouldn't. I think I would go jump off a cliff after a down day. That would be too much for me. Um, I'm not comfortable with my portfolio value fluctuating 10% a day. I'm probably not comfortable with it fluctuating 5% a day. Okay. Let's say I'm comfortable with 2%. And, and this is not Tyler's way or the highway. You, you pick, I don't really care. But me personally, how much my account value fluctuates is directly tied to how emotional I am. And so if I can keep the daily fluctuations minimal, then it's a lot easier to control the emotions. Okay, I think it's much easier to start being comfortable with my portfolio fluctuating 2% a day and experience that for a month and be like, you know what, I'm okay with 3%. I'd much prefer that than starting at 10% and then after three down days being like, well, I just lost a third of my portfolio. Maybe 10% was too much. So let's say it's 2%. Okay, and let's say I have a $25,000 portfolio. So that'd be $500. Okay, I'm okay with my portfolio fluctuating maybe 500 bucks a day on a typical day. Okay, sidebar. I'm assuming this is an active trading account. Okay, we're fairly active in adding positions and subtracting positions. Okay, if this is a long term passive account, this number is probably going to be bigger for me. Okay, but I'm kind of in the context of I'm an active trader. You know, I'm, I'm swing trading, I'm position trading. You know, I've, I've got quite a bit of turnover in my portfolio. I would apply this a little differently if we're talking about, a you know, a long-term passive, more buy and hold portfolio. Okay. So 500 bucks a day. That's question number one. Question number two, what is the S&P 500 ATR? Okay. ATR is average true range. How much is the market moving per day? This is going to fluctuate. Okay, but I kind of want to know what to uh, expect here. So if you don't have ATR, you can go to studies and edit and you can add ATR as an indicator. So right now the S&P 500 is moving $4.28 a day. $4.28 a day. So 428. That's how much the S&P is moving per day. Now notice, notice. When the market goes crazy, like in March, the ATR went up to 15 bucks. We were in an environment where the S&P was moving $15 a day. If you're talking about the index SPX, that, that was moving 150 points a day, which was nuts. Okay, 
things have returned somewhat more to normal. And so the ATRs come right back down. But, but just keep in mind that if you run this number when the ATR is really low, it's going to tell you you can have a certain amount of exposure. But if the market volatility quadruples and the S&P goes from moving $3 a day to $12 a day, it's really going to change what is an appropriate level of exposure. Okay, I can take a little more risk when markets are quiet. When markets are crazy, I really need to shrink the delta to be able to handle the bigger swings. And so this is going to be something that's fluid. It's not static. It's not set in stone. But right now, $4.28 is how much the market's moving on average on a typical day. Rule number three, rule number three, divide number one by number two. Okay, so I'm willing to see my portfolio fluctuate 500 bucks a day. The market's moving $4.28 a day. So what does that come out to be? 500 divided by 428. 100 and, I'll round down, 116 deltas. Okay, so right now, if my portfolio was 116 spider deltas on, a, on an average day, that would translate into my portfolio fluctuating about 500 bucks. Okay, was today an average day in the S&P? We moved about $4.64. That's about an ATR. Okay, so, so today we moved about an ATR, typical day. How much did my portfolio fluctuate? 1200 bucks. Okay, well, that's because, uh, well, that's, that's like two and a half times more than what I'm comfortable with. Why? Because my delta is not 116. Okay, it's like 350, which is almost three times what I'm comfortable with. So do you see how it kind of makes sense that the portfolio went up about 1200 bucks today? Market moved about $4, got about a 300 spider deltas. Okay, give or take a few bucks, you know, delta times S&P movement equaled your profit. So if 116 deltas is what I'm comfortable with, here's, here's the final piece of this part of our discussion. Here's what that means. Okay. This is kind of my max number. If 500 bucks is about what I want to see in my portfolio on a typical day, remember if, if I go above that, like if the market moves two ATRs, which happens every once in a while in one day, then I'm gonna you know, see a lot bigger than $500 fluctuation. So I wouldn't, these are kind of my bumpers on my bowling lane. I don't wanna go outside of 116 deltas. I can always go less than that, but I don't wanna go outside of that. So for those of you that are familiar with kind of our, our methodology at Tackle Trading, when we talk about our directional bias, you know, you can be bullish, right? Actually, I'm going to start there. So you can be bearish, you can be neutral, you can be bullish. So one, two, three, right? It could be bearish, neutral, bullish. Well, that's fine. But if you want to be more specific, okay, because isn't there a difference between being kind of bullish and like, I'm going to buy everything, like back up the truck. I'm super duper bullish. If we just have one word to express how bullish we are, uh, we can't be very specific, okay? So we want something a little more granular than bearish, neutral, bullish, okay? Like I would like to say I'm aggressively bearish or I'm moderately bearish or I'm mildly bearish or I'm neutral or I'm mildly bullish or I'm moderately bullish or I'm aggressively bullish. So what is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, seven. So now I have, I, I took three ways to express my bias, bearish, neutral, bullish, and I turned it into seven, essentially. Is that complicated? I'm not trying to make it overly complicated here. I'm trying to allow myself to um, articulate things with more precision, right? So that we can have a more intelligent conversation about just how bullish am I, right? And where this really helps is when we talk about strategies. There's a million bullish strategies. There's a million bearish strategies. How do you know when to use one versus the other? Might it depend on how bullish you are? If we could converse in terms of, are you aggressively bullish or moderately bullish or mildly bullish? 
it's going to allow us to have, again, a more intelligent conversation and, and maybe better differentiate what's appropriate. Well, numbers are easier than words. And so rather than having this lengthy sentence that explains all the different biases, we just translate it into numbers. Okay, so we say negative three is aggressively bearish, negative two is moderately bearish, negative one is mildly bearish. Zero is neutral. One is, this is positive one, of course, mildly bullish, two is moderately bullish, three is aggressively bullish. Now, what if I could assign a delta to each number for my portfolio? Would you like to know if your portfolio is negative three or positive two? I mean, I know my portfolio right now is bullish, but would you like to be more precise and say just how bullish is my portfolio? See, because right now on the market, I'm like mildly bullish in my head. I'm mildly bullish. Is my portfolio mildly bullish? Did I properly translate my bias in my head based on my analysis to an appropriately positioned portfolio? I don't know unless I have this number scheme kind of laid out for me and my portfolio personally, given what numbers I'm comfortable with. Let me pause for a second. Do you, do you, are you picking up what I'm laying down here? Okay. I don't want to be talking. Uh, I don't want to be losing you. Do you see the value in this concept? I'm going to show you exactly how to do it on your portfolio in a second, but, but are you following with me? You're all shaking your head. Yes, we totally get this. We're eating it up. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. That's what I'm hoping. Let me go back to this 116 spider deltas. 116 spider deltas. That is your three. Negative three for you, you being me, all of us in this example, is negative 116 spider deltas. Okay, so look. Given my comfort level, given how much I want my portfolio to fluctuate on a daily basis, if I'm aggressively bearish, I'm going to make sure my S&P deltas aren't any greater than, and I guess it'd be less than, depending on how you're doing your numbers. I don't want the number to be bigger than a 116, negative. So negative 150, too big, too bearish. Negative 300, too bearish. That exceeds what I'm comfortable with, even if I'm aggressively bearish. You want to be neutral, your portfolio delta should be around zero. You want to be aggressively bullish? Well, for you, that's 116 spider deltas, positive. Again, those are my bumpers in my bowling lane. I don't want to exceed that because then I'm, I'm running the risk that my portfolio would fluctuate more than what I'm comfortable with. Okay. Now, how would I, tra how would I then modify that into like if I'm moderately bearish? or if I'm mildly bearish, or if I'm mildly bullish, or moderately bullish. I'd probably just take, you know, two thirds and one third, whatever the number is for three. So, you know, 116, a third of that would be about 38. So 38 spider deltas would, for me would be the equivalent of negative 38. Um, I'm mildly bearish in my portfolio. If uh, I'm two thirds of 116, about 76, negative 76 deltas, that's about moderately bearish, about moderately bearish. Okay, and then the, the same, uh, you know, mirror those numbers on the bullish side. Okay, and then positive 76 deltas. Now, I know this is math, okay? I know there's a fair bit of math involved here. But listen, you don't have to do this every day, okay? I did this once and now I know. These are my numbers. I can get a sticky note, grab my pen, grab my pen, which I just dropped, and, and get a sticky note and write it down and know, look, for my portfolio, this is what my uh, corresponding delta should be based on if I wanna be bullish, bearish, neutral, whatever, okay? Uh, four, this type of market for, for uh, S and P ATR of whatever we said we were four bucks, four twenty. Okay. Why is this important? Well, think about what happens if you don't do this. Think about what happens if you don't do this. Number one, you've never really established like what is an okay amount of exposure for my portfolio and stated that in terms of exposure, directional exposure, Delta exposure. 
once you measure something and keep track of it, now you can start to make more intelligent decisions. Have you ever wondered, oh, I want to go do a trade. What kind of trade should I do? Well, the market's bullish, so I guess I'll go do a bull trade. Should you? How much exposure do you have right now? Oh, you don't know? Well, then how do you know if you should add another bull trade? How do you know if you should do bear trades or neutral trades? Sure, you might look at the overall market, but then you also have to look at what positions do you already have on? What positions do you already have on? How much exposure do you already have? All right. And, and here's what's interesting. One way or another, you will begin to come up with some kind of shortcut to do this. Maybe you haven't been, maybe you haven't been using Delta. Maybe you've just said, well, actually, I just know five trades is as many as I can have. And as soon as I start doing like six trades, let's say they're all bullish. Tyler, as soon as I have five, six bullish trades, seven bullish trades, I, I just know I'm going to get hit upside the head with a two by four because it just seems like that's about when I, I lose too much if I'm wrong. So maybe you express it in terms of number of trades. That's fine. That's fine. This is more precise. This is more precise. Uh, and, and I would argue that in the long run, it's going to serve you better in, in managing the overall portfolio and knowing what kind of new trades to do. Um, and, and just overall being more aware of what your risk is, of what your risk is. All right. Okay. So I'm going to pivot and I'm going to show you how to, how to look at this on a risk graph. Okay. I'm going to show you how to look at this on a risk graph. Let me pause for a second. There were two questions that came in that I want to address here real quick. And then I'll show you how to analyze your entire portfolio on a risk graph. Okay. One thing actually, now that I'm saying that, that I remember this should be intuitive. If my delta is too big, which let's say that this portfolio has too much exposure. Again, maybe you say, well, Tyler, I don't care. I made a bunch more money. You know, I'm okay if my portfolio goes up 1200 bucks on a good day. I just don't want it to go down 1200 bucks on a bad day. Well, guess what? You can't have it both ways. You can't have a ton of exposure when the market's going in the right direction and no exposure when the market's going in the wrong direction. Nobody's that nimble. Okay. No, nobody has the ability to be long and strong on an up day and then turn on a dime. And a day like yesterday, when the market goes down, they're like, Nope, I, I cut my Delta pretty quick. And then today when the market goes right back up, they, they ramp the Delta higher. No, you can't do it that quickly. If you're going to put yourself in a position to see the portfolio swing 1200 bucks positive on a good day, it's going to swing 1200 bucks negative on a, on, on a bad day. Okay. You've got to take both sides. Um, so if the Delta is too big, there's two ways you can fix it. Number one is the easiest and we'll call it subtraction. Take off some trades. Look, I have 352 Delta. If I say, oh man, that's too much exposure. Okay. Guess what? Act some of these positive numbers. Close this IWM trade. Close this DI, DHI trade. Close the SPY trade. Close some of these that have a big positive number, or or you know do something to make them less uh, directional. Okay, like maybe sell cover calls or something. Okay, so you can you can close existing bull trades if you're too bullish in your portfolio, or you can open new bear trades. So let's say these are all stock and I don't have any cover calls. Could I go through and sell cover calls in every stock I own to reduce my portfolio exposure? Sure. Um, could I go find some stocks to short? Sure. You can do whatever makes the most sense given what trades you find and what the portfolio looks like, but better do something or else you have too much exposure in your portfolio. All right, Dennis, how often do you recalculate since the S&P changes daily, the ATR changes daily? Well, I don't want to be overly anal about this. I mean, if the ATR moves 10 cents, I mean, it's not that much, right? So, so Dennis, I am preaching to be very methodical about this, but I am not so anal uh, so as to require somebody, if the ATR moves a penny, you better recalculate the number. Um, you know, $4.30, uh, probably if it moves a buck up or down, if the ATR goes to $5.30 or $3.30, I may recalculate. So maybe a dollar move, maybe a 50 cent move, you kind of have to decide. Um, certainly when something like this is happening where the ATR is just exploding, I know I want to get my Delta smaller. Okay. Here's the other thing. There are things you're in control of and there's things you're not in control of. Unfortunately, you may say, look, 116 spider deltas is fine with me right now. 
if the market crashes tomorrow and the ATR doubles, you're going to see your portfolio drop more than you wanted it to. You will have these occasional outlier days where we move two or three ATRs. If you were leaning positive three and you were at the highest delta that was appropriate, and then we move two ATRs in the wrong direction. Yeah. I mean, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. So the more you hang out at positive three, negative three for your portfolio, the more often you may see kind of a, you know, sucker punch that hurts a little bit because you have a lot of exposure. You want to be less aggressive, hang out at positive two, negative two. You want to be less aggressive, hang out at positive one, negative one. Okay. The more often you lean really bullish, really bearish, the more the portfolio is going to swing. Okay. Um, what was the other question on Pinterest? The other one was, uh, Nick, so if the stock doesn't show up when you bait away on the S&P, that is a good question. Um, if the market was open, I'd throw a position on Pinterest. It could be the way it's laid out. Um, Pinterest has been around long enough. It could also be if it's like a new IPO, maybe there's not enough past history to run the calculation. I don't know why that would be for Pinterest. Um, it's been a while since I've come across a situation like that. That would be a good question for uh, your broker. Because off the top of my head, I'm not sure. It could be, it could be situational. Okay. Now, let me, let me show you how to look at a risk graph. Okay. Some of us are, are very um, analytical, very numbers driven. Others of us like to see a picture. All right. Just, just show me a picture. Can you, can you show me how to visualize this? Well, if you go look at a uh, risk graph, you guys already know, I can look at a risk graph of, of an individual trade. Okay. So like AMD. Okay. Here's, here's the AMD trade that we have on. Remember, we got a really low delta, not, not very much exposure. This was a bull put spread. So I, I got a bull put spread on, on AMD, not a lot of delta or say, okay, what do I got on the S&P? S&P, I've got a bear tamer position. Okay. Talking about this tonight in the bear market survival guide, uh, mastermind meeting. So we got it. We got a longer term core position in the S&P. Okay. And, and so I can look at each position individually, but what I really want to do is I really want to smash them all together. Okay. Like when my kids play Play-Doh. Okay. See if I were, if I were playing Play-Doh, I'd have pink right here. I'd have white right here. I'd have yellow right here. My kids don't do that. Okay. As soon as they pop the top, they're just jamming those things together. And eventually it's just a ball of brown. They just mix it all together. And I guess that's fine if, you're, if that's what you want to do. I just like to have it, you know, nice and separate. Well, in a risk graph, I do kind of want to mush all the positions together. I want to see what happens. I want to take those bull trades and shove them on the risk graph. And I want to take those bear trades and shove them on the risk graph and see what the net result is. Do they cancel each other out? Like, do I have enough bull trades to offset the bear trades? Are they all still bullish? What if I have like one big bull trade and three small bear trades? I'm curious. What is the overall net effect? Visually, I want to see a picture. And you can do that. You can do that on the risk graph. Okay. So by default, it's one at a time. Okay, pink, yellow, white, we're separated. If you want to smush them together and see what the whole portfolio would look like, there's a couple of buttons you got to click. Okay, so watch, watch my uh, mouse here on the screen. Number one, down below under positions and simulated trades, you got to click on single symbol and change it to portfolio beta weighted. Portfolio beta weighted. Okay. And by default, it's probably going to select everything that you have in the account in addition to every simulated trade, which is another word for um, not, a, not even practice trade. It's a trade that you simulated at one point. Whether you enter the trade or not is irrelevant. It'll show up down here in red or green, like this right here on Zoom. This is not an actual position in the portfolio. This is a simulated position. I simulated it at one point and it stayed there. Okay. If it's a live position, it'll be in black. If it's a live position, it'll be back. Here's another simulated trade. 
if I actually have an open position, so I think what I should say is, is it an open position? This is a paper account, so these are all paper trades, but is it an open position? Has the order actually filled? If it has, it'll be in black, okay? So VWO, this is an open position. I would want this modeled in the graph because I have exposure. I don't want this simulated uh, deal in Zoom. I don't want that reflected in my graph. I don't have that position right now. It's not an open position. So you can either go through here and manually delete all these simulated ones. Okay, so I can open these guys up and X out of them, or you can do them all at once. You click on this, this button right here and you delete all the simulated trades. That'll take them all out. So now it's just open positions. Okay, you see right here, it says show all. That's another one where you could hide the simulations as well. So you can manually delete them, delete them all at once or just hide them, okay? Or just hide them. And then it'll just show, it'll just show my open positions. Okay, it'll just show my open positions. So I went to portfolio beta weighted. I hid the simulations or I went to show all, but I deleted all the simulations, either one. And then in the graph, here's what it's gonna do. Number one, you've gotta change the beta symbol. Do you want this risk graph relative to what DR Horton is doing, DHI going up or down? Or would you like the benchmark to be the S&P? I, mean, I, I would like it to be the S&P. So I'm gonna put in the S&P. And so now this price scale at the bottom is the S&P 500, okay? And the current price of the S&P, unlock this, I just got one price slice. This is the current price of the S&P, 337, 337. Okay. All right. This is my portfolio. This blue line and purple. This is my portfolio right now. So right now the portfolio is up about 14,005 something, 14,800. Okay. And I have 352 deltas. Do you see how that matches what's on my monitor tab? 352 deltas, about 14,800 profit. Those should match. That's how I know that I did it right. Is my portfolio bullish or bearish or neutral? It's bullish to the tune of 352 deltas. Okay. Do you see how this portfolio looks like a long stock? For those of you that know what a risk graph of a long stock looks like. If the market goes up, I'm making money. If the market goes down, I'm losing money. This portfolio, I, so I shoved all these positions together, right? Got this big blob of Play-Doh. What does it look like? long stock. Why? Because most of the positions in this practice trade account are long stock, right? Like if the majority of the Play-Doh colors you smash together are pink, that blob in the end is probably going to be mostly pink, right? If, if I had a ton of iron condors in this uh, portfolio, you would see the blended risk graph look like a condor. If I had a mostly covered calls, the blended risk graph would look like a cover call. So whatever's like the dominant position in the portfolio, naturally that's gonna be kind of what drives the graph of the entire portfolio, okay? If I wanted to, I could say, well, actually, part of this portfolio is like just a passive portfolio. I'm gonna use this grouping feature. I'm gonna show groups. See, I have this passive account here. Like these guys, these guys are half, more than half of the portfolio. Is just these these passive positions. I don't I don't want to show those. I don't want to show those. I just want to look at some of these active trades. I want to model these differently than the other guys. So if I go to the analyze tab, I can say, hey, don't don't show all these VWO, VTI, VNQ, VB. Those are like passive stock positions. I want to I want to X those out. Um, I'm going to take out the S and P that's a long-term position too. That's a bond position. Take that out. See, I don't think I have enough option positions to really shift this thing to really shift this thing. Okay. So because of that, I just can't show you what it would look like if I had a bunch of condors cause I don't, but you can, you can select which ones you want to include in the mashup here and which ones you want to, uh, exclude. Okay. 
So if you followed all my guidelines, they should match. If they don't, for some reason, it could be that you have some simulations, some of those red or yellow orders in, this, in the uh, risk graph that aren't actual positions over here. That would be one reason why it's not matching up, okay? But if you, if you make sure that all of these positions have a delta and only these positions are reflected, it should be, it should be pretty close. Here's the other thing though, you got to make sure that the current stock price is accurate. Like, like if I throw the S and P, you know, 40 points lower, the Delta is going to be different because it's reflecting the S and P $30 lower than where it's at right now. So make sure that the, the, the price slice is at the current uh, stock price. Okay. There could be some other minor things. Honestly, if I went through everything that could be off, it would take me an hour, <laughs> but uh, those are just some of the, the, the common maybe errors that aren't causing it to line up. Okay. So if you're a visual person and you want to kind of model the market going up or down, okay, here's my final point. Okay. Here's my final point. Then, then I'll let my colleagues chime in. Um, I could look at that, that ATR. You know, the, the ATR was at $4 and 28 cents. I could look at my risk graph. I could look at my, my risk graph and I could say, okay, Right now, the S&P 500 is at 337. If tomorrow we go up one ATR, we have a typical update tomorrow, we go up $4.28. That would be the S&P going up to 341.28. So I could just move this to 341.28, or I could just add another slice and put it at 341.28. That sounds about right. Um, and it would tell me, okay, so what you would do tomorrow, this is how much money you would make. Okay, your P&L between here and there. So, so right now I'm up 14.7. We go up an ATR tomorrow, I'm up 16.2. So the difference between 14.7 and 16.2, can't tell my head, uh, 1,500 bucks. So I'll make 1,500 bucks tomorrow if we go up one ATR. We go down one ATR, you know, so, so you can model out like, like how much you'll see um, if we go up or down, you know, a certain ATR. And, and that might, you might like that model a little bit better than if you just do it in your head using the Delta over here. Okay. There's a little bit more advanced features in here that I could play with, with, with the shading and the standard deviations um, story for another time. Hopefully, hopefully with this discussion, you've got a pretty good idea of number one. So th these are your takeaways, okay, if you're taking notes. My first homework assignment would be figure out what's your number in terms of risk, in terms of how much portfolio delta you think is appropriate using this little guideline that I gave you. And then see if you can work that into a, a, a directional bias schematic like this from negative three to positive three so that you know Hey, right now, Tyler, I'm like moderately bullish. And for me, that's 76 deltas. That's kind of what I'm shooting for in my portfolio. Or hey, right now I'm mildly bearish. And for me, that translates into negative 38 in my portfolio. So that's what I'm shooting for. Okay, that would be step number one. Uh, step number two then would be start to pay attention to that number. Okay, use the beta weighting feature, start measuring your portfolio exposure daily, weekly, you know, whatever's appropriate. Daily obviously is great. Um, and maybe dabble a little bit with the risk graph if you want to use that feature.